So this downswing sequence move is imperative to allowing our body to get in such a position that we can get this club working down to the ground. Staying down through the golf ball, without a doubt, it's one of the biggest frustrations for a lot of players, leading to many a top shot or where you hit above the equator of the ball. If this is something that plagues your game, well, stay tuned. This video is really gonna help. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here on the range today at Junalup Resort talking all about how to stay down through the golf ball. It is absolutely something that you see with the best players in the world and I'm going to show you my three big keys to ensure that you at home can also do the same and hopefully replicate some of that great ball striking, that compression, the power, the ball fizzing off that club face that you see with your favorite golfer. But before we get into it, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell if you haven't already. Let's grow this channel together so I can just keep bringing you this great information to help improve your game. And also just a reminder, if you are looking for something a little bit more personalized, well, I do do online swing analysis through Skillist and also have a premium video library over on kggolf.com which you can certainly check out which certainly just expands on everything that we talk within these videos. But on to today's session talking all about how to help you at home stay down through that shot. Now what do we see with the recreational golfer and why is this even a thing? of not staying down through the shot. Well, golf is played on the ground and the way a golf club is designed is to hit that golf ball on what's called a descending angle or where that golf club comes down, strikes the ball first and the ground second. We can use this little hula hoop here, which you'll see in many other videos, so you can check them out throughout the channel. Uh, effectively, this is highlighting what's called the low point of the golf swing where that little black bit of tape is. That is the bottom of the swing arc. So what we're looking for, and you can see here, just using the divot that I've got on the ground here, is that the golf club needs to rise down the black point needs to be underneath the surface of the ground, have a low point about in the middle of the divot there and then rise up again. And that's what we see with the best players in the world. The average recreational golfer, however, struggles with two skills. The first is what we call low point control and the second is what we call arc height. So low point control is where the bottom of the swing takes place. So if a professional is here, very often we'll see an amateur golfer sometimes have a bottom of a swing here or here or here. But not only that, when it comes to controlling the height of the golf swing, that is also a massive key. And what that means is just how high or how low this actual golf swing works relative to the surface of the ground. So you can see I just took a nice little slab of grass out of the ground there. And that would mean that the golf club did have an amount of down on it, a few degrees, enough to get the club working through the surface of the ground and then rising up again. And we do want that because that is going to lead to compression. But when it does come to controlling the height of the golf swing, very often we'll see that even if the low point for an amateur golfer is good, sometimes it might come in too high. So you can and see that the club would strike above that ball or it might be a combination of the low point and the arc height but all of these simply attribute to a struggle to not have that golf club coming down and striking the ball in such a way in which you are staying down through the shot and mitigating the chance that you'll hit at the equator or above the ball. So if a recreational golfer would step up to this ball, a player who struggles to stay down, well, they might make a reasonable swing to the top, but then as the golf club comes in, they might get the golf club coming in too high, and you can see that's just gonna hit on top. And they're the shots that only advance a few feet in front of us, or in fact, might just run along the ground for a long time. Neither of those of which really, at the end of the day, we want to get some reasonable strike on that golf ball so we can get some height and get that ball closer to the pin and avoid the trouble which may be on the ground leading up to where we want to position the ball. So my three big keys to ensure that you're able to stay down through the shot. Number three, without a doubt, is the most important. So let's make sure that you stick around for that. The first of these is all about creating some sort of rotation at the top of the swing. Now, what that means is in regards to our body. If I'm a player who doesn't turn enough in the backswing, so for example, my hips don't rotate, my shoulders don't rotate, and my arms pull off the ball, well, what happens is we create a very narrow golf swing. The distance between where the hands are and the body, this gets very short. 
And then as the golf club then wants to come in, because the arms are very close to the body, effectively the whole bottom of the swing is raised up. If you were to exaggerate the opposite, and let's say that my arms are long, and I just keep them long throughout the entirety of the motion, well, you can see that I'm more likely to hit the ground. So key number one is let's ensure that we've got enough turn in the backswing to encourage our arms to stay long throughout the swing. If we don't turn, our arms are gonna compensate, they're gonna fold in close to our body, and that leads to a bunch of ball striking errors, and one of those specifically being hitting the top of the golf ball. So that's the first thing that we need to ensure that we're trying to eradicate out of our game. And the second of these is what we call the Tour Pro recentering move. And effectively, every high level golfer will make this move in the transition of their golf swing. And most recreational golfers who struggle with topping the golf ball certainly do not. And that's why they struggle controlling the low point and the arc height of their golf swing. So what is this recentering move? So the recentering move is all about if I get to about this stage in the backswing where my lead arm would be leveled to the ground, with a professional, as they're continuing to finish their backswing, they would actually tend to have this falling movement towards the golf ball. And as this occurs, what happens is their front hip gets lower than their back hip, which puts them in a position where they're almost coasting down towards the ground. And as you can see, when I do that, that starts to position my body. And if you look at players such as Rory McIlroy or someone similar, they all have this nice big dipping, pushing motion down into the ground. Effectively, what that means is they're recentering, applying a lot of pressure down in the ground, which has a follow on effect of allowing them to explode up out of their posture and generate a bucket load of speed. So this recentering move is very important. We see a lot of recreational golfers make this move. They will tend to load up their back foot thinking that they need to get all their weight and all their mass onto this back foot. But what happens is it's a little bit too late in regards to their downswing sequence. And before they know it, you can see that I'm hanging back. Also, my body is more likely to raise up due to the shaft getting steep, therefore also affecting our ability to stay down through the ball. And the third and final tip, and without a doubt, this is one of the crucial, most important elements to ensure that you're working on within your swing is to ensure that the sequence of your downswing coming all the way into impact is conducive of allowing you to stay down. So what does that mean? Well, let's put these three together. The first would be a big turn, allowing our arms to stay long. The second would be this recentering move where we're moving back down towards the ball. And the third from there would be then allowing the golf club to come underneath us, allowing those arms to lengthen as our body is moving down and forward towards impact, getting us into this position where we have the ability, our body is compressed, we are covering the ball to ensure that we're able to get that ball first ground second contact. So this downswing sequence move is imperative to allowing our body to get in such a position that we can get this club working down to the ground. And what is the way that we need to see this happen? Well, first of all, it also comes from having enough room in the backswing so our arms can fall as we recenter and allowing those arms to come down underneath to provide us with the ability to get the golf club coming back. And very often what we see with players is they'll get to the top and then from here, their sequence will be out, they'll drive with their upper body, their legs will straighten, the shaft will get steep, and they'll stand up at the moment of impact. So if you're topping the golf ball, you are struggling with your ball striking, I can almost guarantee it's one of these three. So what I want you to do is you're gonna watch this video a couple of times. You can check out many of the other videos on the channel all about compressing the golf ball, getting a little bit more of a powerful strike with the irons, but these three are very key. We're talking about creating the turn. So we've got the long arms, the recentering move, and then getting that downswing sequence correct, which will give us that divot. Let's put all these three together and let's hit one down there, see how that ball feels off the club face. All right, big turn, recenter, get the sequence. And didn't that feel amazing? I did all those three keys and we got that ball first ground second contact. You can see that lovely little slab that I took out of the ground, creating the most amount of possible potential speed and penetration with that ball flight. So if you are struggling with your ball striking, I want you to go through these video, implement these keys, and I'm sure they'll help you massively with upgrading that ball striking. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Once again, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me down a comment if you've got any questions about any of the content today. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.